Yeah, g'day and welcome back to my channel. As you can see, I've been skiving a little bit on the CNC lathe retrofit project. I needed to get this little table made because it's a present for my mother-in-law's birthday. That's pretty important. Now when I do these projects in wood, I tend to sign underneath with like a name and a date, but I'd kind of like to brand them with my telefish. So let's make a branding line. Right, to mill a branding iron on the CNC mill, I need a toolpath. Back when I used to use Onshape, I'd taken a photo of my logo and digitized it as a DXF. And I'd also imported it across, cleaned it up, and made a 3D model out of it. And that model was exported as an IGS file. I brought it into FreeCAD to do the toolpath. The intention was to just make four machining paths. This one around the outside, one in each of those holes, and then this one. No, because I'd also need one for the eye. So that was kind of the idea. FreeCAD's got a workbench called Path where you can create uh, toolpaths. So I figured I'd give that a go. Just starting with one of the real easy ones, like this sort of weird shape hole here, I figured I could go in and either do a pocket or an adaptive toolpath. So let's try a, a pocket with a two millimeter end mill, which is small enough to fit in there. Zigzag with offset should give me a toolpath which just zigs and zags backwards and forwards and then does one lap around the outside. When I apply that, I get errors. Zero working area to process. Please check your selection and settings. Now, I have no idea whether this has got something to do with importing an IGS file rather than a model that was done in FreeCAD, but yeah. If I do the outside, this part with pretty much the same idea, once again, doesn't work. If I try that outside part using an adaptive path, it does something, but only in a few little areas. Don't really understand why it's leaving such a big gap. That's got to be way more than one millimeter radius of a two millimeter tool. So I tried all sorts of different settings, but eventually just gave up. So if anyone can point out what I'm doing wrong here, I've looked at some tutorials online, but nothing really tells me what the issue is. I eventually gave up and went back to my old version of feature cam. So I tried various ways of making tool paths there as well, but always got errors that the geometry was self intersecting. Even when I removed the islands from these features, I still got errors for self-intersecting geometry when I tried to create toolpaths. My next idea was just to redraw all of the geometry within feature cam, but yeah, nah, that just looked terrible. <laughs> but even there, when I tried to machine out those pockets, I got the self-intersecting geometry errors, which left me no other option than the easy path, just engraving along the DXF lines. Not really the look I was after, but better than nothing. I was hoping to drop this level down and then keeping a brand of like the outside part of the television and the fish. But hey, let's go to the mill and at least get this done. Right, just let me switch out the work holding. Now remember, we're making a branding iron here. A zero precision job. So I'm not even gonna bother tramming in my vise. It's just not that important. Try and couple of parallels there. To do the job, I'm just gonna use this piece of mild steel. Now for most engraving that I do, I just use this, my drag engraver. It's a nice and simple tool. I made it myself. It's just a 20 millimeter body with a spring loaded tip. It takes old six millimeter carbide shanks, which I just grind into a point. You just push it down into the metal and drag it around. It does a nice job, but it doesn't engrave very deep. So for this job, I'm gonna use this engraver. This was once again made from an old carbide end mill shank, but this time it's just been ground with kind of a pyramid three point tip to it. It's actually the first time I've used it. So let's see how well it works.
Now also given the very imprecise nature of what I'm doing here, I'm not going to bother touching off to exactly find this corner. That's going to be close enough as a zero point. Zero X, zero Y. Before I start engraving, I'll just clean up their face with an insert face mill. Right here, I will need to touch off. And we're set 10 millimeters for the Z height, and we're ready to go. So now I've got a known surface height, I can touch off my engraving tool. that look that was going down two millimeters I wanted it to be pretty deep so that once I burn it on wood it'll actually have some definition it's worth a try whip that out need a little deburring right let's test this thing out just set the oven for I think 300 280 will do it. Alright, the sacrificial victim for this test is just a piece of cherry wood. It's the piece I used last week to turn the Morgan fan hub. Shouldn't take steel too long to come up to temperature. That did nothing, so let's just tweak that temperature a bit. No, I think it still needs to be hotter. I'm just going to throw this across the planer. This inker thickness of planer has been a real game changer for my woodworking. I've never made such accurate things out of wood as this has enabled. Really a nice tool.
we're at 480 Celsius now, which is weird because whenever I pull something out of the oven, even if it's only like 170 degrees, if I put it on a counter, it would leave a mark. So far, this has left no mark. We've got smoke, it's a good sign. I wonder how long you leave it for. All right. Aru. <laughs> oh man. Spot the dumbass who didn't think that this is going to be reversed. Time's up. I need to get this done. Luckily, the only people who are going to know that that brand is uh, back to front are me. About 10,000 people who watch this video and anybody who looks at it and knows what a television is supposed to look like. Now if any of you got any ideas of how I would do that toolpath as I wanted in FreeCAD Paths, I'm all ears. So please, in the comments section, let me know what I'm doing wrong. Once that glue's dried, the last thing I need to do is just finish off all the wax polishing. Thanks a lot for watching.